Welcome to the Lay's Physician Training video. After watching this tape, you should have a good understanding of the Lay's procedure. Review the package insert for a complete set of instructions. Lay's endoscopic discectomy permits physicians to offer definitive treatment to patients suffering from radicular symptoms due to a contained herniated or bulging lumbar disc. These patients might otherwise undergo open surgery or be managed with temporizing treatment. Lays offers the advantages of minimally invasive therapy, including local anesthesia, limited length of stay, and minimal post-procedure pain. Most patients are discharged several hours after the procedure. Many experience significant pain relief during the procedure or shortly after, and the majority of patients who respond do so within one week. The long-term success rate is approximately 85%. Compared to open surgery on contained discs, Lays offers a higher success rate and neither damages the posterior spinal elements nor jeopardizes the opportunity for subsequent spinal surgery. Lays endoscopic discectomy is a procedure for treating contained lumbar discs. It is not indicated for free fragments, extrusions, or for patients with significant bony compression. In this video, we will introduce the Lays kit components and show you how to set up for and complete a Lays procedure. First, let's identify all the items in the Lays kit. This is the Lays endoscope. The Lays endoscope is actively deflectable and it contains a built in laser fiber. It has four connections image, illumination, irrigation, and laser. The image connection provides a video picture. The illumination connection provides light to the endoscope. The irrigation line provides saline solution for cooling. The laser fiber is connected to a Holmium YAG laser. Two Lays kit models are available. One has a coherent brand laser fiber connector and the other has a trimodine brand laser fiber connector. Using this knob, you can position the laser fiber from 1 to 6 millimeters from the endoscope's distal end. Let's take a brief look at connecting the Lays kit to the endoscopy tower. You can connect Lays to almost any endoscopy tower if you use these adapters. They are a Claris light cable and a Claris endoscope coupler. Choosing which model of each to use is beyond the scope of this tape, but it isn't complicated. Attach the image connector to the endoscopy tower's light cable this way. The image connector is simple too. Align the pins on the Lay's image connector, push, twist clockwise, and it's on. Tug to test that it's securely attached. If you wish, rotate the image connector to orient the image. Here's how you focus the image. This technique requires only one person and two hands. Place the distal end of the endoscope under a sterile drape. Grasp the endoscope coupler distally with one hand and hold the focusing ring with the other hand. Turn until the image is smaller, then look at the perimeter of the image and make this edge as sharp as possible. If it's sharp, you'll find that the image is perfectly focused. The Lays endoscope is placed into the disc through a working channel. Identify the working channel by its green dot. A triangular skin stop helps secure the working channel against the patient's skin. The working channel has an aspiration port for removing the saline irrigant. You can loosen or tighten the working channel's grip on the endoscope shaft by turning a compression fitting. Straight and curved working channels are available. The curved working channel is sometimes required for the L5-S1 disc. The dilator fits inside the working channel and makes the working channel's tip less traumatic. You will use the Lays Kit's trephine to cut through the annulus. Identify the trephine by its red dot. 
The laser kit contains a flexible guide needle. This is the first kit component to enter the patient's body. You will pass the dilator working channel pair over the guide needle. The laser kit contains four additional items. A scalpel, a ruler, a stylet, and a pen. The stylet is packaged inside the trephine. You can use it as a sterile pointer or to push disc fragments blocking the working channel out of the way. Now that we've introduced the components of the kit, let's see how they're used clinically. Lay's endoscopic discectomy can be performed with a patient in either a lateral decubitus or a prone position. This patient is prone. Prep and drape the patient. Hold the laser kit stylet in one hand, use fluoro to find the entry point, and anesthetize the entry point and the track using a syringe held in the other hand. To introduce the kit's guide needle into the disc, put the C arm in an oblique view, as for discography, remove the needle's protective cap, and advance the needle to the center of the nucleus. You may need to use your other hand to keep the needle's proximal end bent out of the way of the C-arm head. Verify your position with AP and or lateral fluoroscopy. There are many theories about which side of the patient to enter. Some physicians enter the ipsilateral side, others choose the contralateral side, and still others choose either the left or the right side based on the layout of their procedure room. All strategies seem to be equally successful. Next, you should use the kit scalpel to make a stab wound by the guide needle so the working channel and the dilator can pass through the skin and fascia easily. Lock the working channel and the dilator together and pass them over the guide needle. Advance them to the annulus. Check with AP and lateral flora. Your goal is to place the distal end of the working channel into the nucleus. Here's how. Remove the dilator from the working channel. Insert the trephine. Score the annulus with the trephine, then remove the trephine. Reinsert the dilator. Lock it onto the working channel's hub. Advance both the working channel and the dilator into the nucleus. Place a 4x4 between the skin and the skin stop and tighten the skin stop. Remove the dilator, attach the aspiration tubing, and you're ready to insert the laser endoscope. Connecting the irrigation is also easy. One end goes to the Lay's endoscope's irrigation line, and the other goes to a one liter bag of normal saline. Put the irrigation line into the endoscopy pump and close the pump head. Prime the pump, then set the pump to deliver 30 cc's of saline per minute. Proper irrigation and aspiration are crucial to keeping the endoscope's tip and the disc cool. This picture shows you the path of the saline. If the working channel becomes blocked, the aspiration and cooling will be compromised. If the laser fiber is buried in tissue, the tip can easily overheat. Cooling with proper irrigation and aspiration is crucial for the safety of the case. 
Connect the laser fiber to the laser this way. Position the endoscope and slide it through the working channel. Sliding the endoscope through the working channel, you see the working channel walls, then the disc. The laser fiber is at the 9 o'clock position. Rotate the image connector to reposition it to the 3 o'clock position if you want up on the endoscope to correspond to up on the television monitor. Turn on the red aiming beam. It makes the laser fiber much more visible. Set the laser energy. Many physicians start at 1.4 joules per pulse at 10 pulses per second, or 14 watts. Later in the case, after you have established a cavity, you might increase the pulse energy to 2 joules per pulse at 15 pulses per second, or 30 watts. You need to choose an energy that works safely for the individual patient. Fire the laser, gently advancing the endoscope. Rotate the endoscope to enlarge the opening. Keep the tip of the laser fiber in view. For much of the case, you will simply be advancing and retracting the laser fiber, rotating it to reach different quadrants. While you move back and forth, rotating, you might be concerned that the cavity does not seem to be enlarging. You get this perception because as you vaporize nucleus proposis from the disc center, more nuclear material herniates itself into the cavity. This process will continue for most of the case. When you have vaporized most of the surplus nucleus, the cavity will finally begin to enlarge and you can begin to deflect the endoscope. Deflecting the endoscope tip is reserved for later in the case. Whenever deflecting, be sure not to pull the endoscope back as the working channel's distal edge can shear off its tip. Even a small cut in the endoscope shaft can cause a leak seriously compromising the flow of irrigant and cooling to the endoscope tip. Your goal with the laser is to create a cavity shaped like a piece of pie. The apex of the cavity is the distal end of the working channel. The cavity should be widest in the axial plane and narrowest in the cephalid cordon direction. The homeomyag laser light only travels a short distance in water. That's why this laser is so good for discectomy. Almost all the light is absorbed completely within 2 millimeters. While this short range adds to laser safety, it does present a difficulty. The laser fiber tip needs to be in contact or near contact with the disc for it to ablate. If you're firing and nothing seems to be happening, consider advancing the laser fiber. There are two ways to do this. One, just move the endoscope forward. Two, you can turn the laser fiber advancement knob at the rear of the laser endoscope handle clockwise. Using this knob, you can position the laser fiber from 1 to 6 millimeters from the endoscope's distal end. Remember that the distal end of the endoscope is radio-opaque, so on fluoro, the laser fiber can extend up to an additional 6 millimeters. Don't bury the laser fiber in tissue. That can lead to overheating. To determine the endpoint of the procedure, consider both the total energy delivered and the appearance of the disc cavity. Most physicians deliver at least 15 kilojoules of energy, but there are no rules that can be applied to all patients. Ask the laser operator to report delivered energy every kilojoule. The appearance of the disc cavity can also be a useful guide to identify the endpoint. Early in the case, the cavity will collapse as you withdraw the endoscope, but towards the end, it will begin to stay open. Some physicians turn off the laser in the irrigation, then watch the cavity as the patient coughs. If the cavity closes up, you should probably start lasing again. Don't forget to turn on the pump. Proper irrigation and aspiration are crucial. Withdrawing for the last time, you see the working channel walls, the, and outside the body, you see the jet of irrigant. Withdraw the working channel. 
Some doctors inject an antibiotic into the disc and the tract through the working channel as they withdraw the working channel. Close the wound. Using an oversized dressing will help remind the patient that, no matter how good they feel, they have just undergone a discectomy. Performing a laser case is not difficult. You use the guide needle, working channel, dilator, and trephine to position the laser endoscope into the nucleus. Under constant endoscopic control, you use the built-in laser fiber to vaporize the nucleus proposis. Constant irrigation and aspiration help keep the disc cool. You can determine the location of the endoscope's tip at any time using fluoro. Learning how to do lays helps you to provide a definitive, minimally invasive therapy to your patients. Your patients will appreciate your efforts. Learn more about lays at our website or by attending a lays preceptorship.